Hi everyone, it's John. Welcome back to my channel. I have a first time author reading experience review for you. The book is a book by Willa Cather, who, as I just said, I've never read anything by before. And this is not one of the famous My Antonia or O Pioneers books. This is a another book that she is uh, not as well known for. It is called A Lost Lady. And this is a uh, vintage edition. Uh, just as a, a bit of a preamble, this review might contain more spoilers than some people may appreciate, especially if you're interested in reading the book. If you just want to hear a, a review of it, then you might not care as much. So, like I said, I've never read anything by Willa Cather before, despite owning a few other of her novels. I decided to pick this up at a local library bookstore sale because of its brevity, and it was also one of those attractive vintage editions that I love so much. On an intuitive level, I never really thought Cather would appeal to me because of the way she's kind of typecast as a writer whose work is dominated by ideas of the American West and its ever-receding frontier, both being of little historical or, or literary interest to me, to be quite honest. Before the longer commitments of My Antonia and O Pioneers, I guess this might be a suitable if lackluster introduction to her writing. I hoped it would be suitable, but it's hard to tell just one novel out. Lackluster, not so much. Actually really, really enjoy this novel, novella, much more than I thought it would, and I wanted to share a little bit about it. First, a little bit about Willa Cather's life, if you're not familiar with the sort of arc of it. She was born in 1873 in Virginia, and uh, when she was about nine years old, her family moved out to Nebraska, where she would later set many of her novels. After writing some, after getting some early encouragement about her writing, while she attended the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, she continued on with it. Uh, she wrote a book of poetry, which she had published in 1903 at the age of 30. Uh, and it was followed up just a couple of years later with her first book of short stories, which was called The Troll Garden. And it wasn't until she was four years old that she began that she began to gain more recognition with novels like O Pioneers, which came out in 1913, The Song of the Lark from 1915, and My Antonia from 1918. And she died in 1947. So about a lost lady. So we have a protagonist. The Lost Lady, her name is Marion Foster. She is a young, graceful ingenue who is married to a man old enough to be her father, who is named Captain Forrester. And they've settled in the community of Sweetwater, which has deep, abiding tides to the uh, building of the Transcontinental Railroad. Ever since he can remember, one of their neighbors... A young, naive man named Neil has idolized Mrs. Forrester, Mrs. Forrester as a sort of paragon of beauty, virtue, all that is good. And it soon becomes clear that Marion's youthful coquettishness isn't the whole story of who she is when uh, Neil finds that she's been engaged in an ongoing extramarital affair with another man. Suddenly, Neil's opinion of her takes uh, a cliff dive. And the man in question uh, is named Frank Ellinger, and he competed for the hand of a young woman at a party that Marion gave once. Over time, Captain Forrester's health begins to decline and unravel after a series of debilitating strokes. And one day, Marion learns that her husband has lost much of his money 
in this railroad venture. Uh, financial speculation is basically what it was. To help her savage, salvage what little might remain, she secures the legal services of Ivy Peters, who is a boorish cad of a person who was a boy that Neil knew growing up. Uh, the discovery of her affair with one of her formal, former rivals and knowing that she has employed someone like Ivy as an attorney are the two big events that introduce Neil to the quote-unquote sort of cynicism of the real world and its, its discontents. Nevertheless, he continues to look up to Marion in a way, even though she doesn't hold the vaunted position in his imagination that she once did. Whether Marion is truly lost is a question that Cather sort of leaves unresolved. Uh, Neil certainly seems to think so, but then again he essentializes Marion down to his narrow parochial idea of womanhood. Judging from the pretty unorthodox ways that Cather treats her subject, treats the subject of gender in her other novels, and possibly the fact that Cather was a lesbian at a time when public knowledge of this would have ended her literary career instantly, makes me suspect that the lapsarian nature of Marion's fall, quote-unquote, has just as much to do with Neil's parochial perceptions of Mary as it does Marion herself. Throughout the novel, or novella, really, Cather's writing is bound up with at least two things. First of all, the sense of place that she builds is really incredible, which makes me look all the more forward to things like O Pioneers and My Antonia. Her description of Sweetwater and the Forester House are really, really well done, really enchanting. Even more interesting is the way that Cather hitches Mrs. Forrester's lost nature, her sense of moral perdition, onto the disappearing frontier and Captain Forrester's marked physical decline. These three are all interconnected in a fundamental way for Cather. Inherent in what she's trying to say, I think, is that the frontier spirit, whatever that is, was one of goodness and purity, but was marred by increasing commercialism and corporatism, as evidenced by Captain Forrester's sudden loss of money in the stock market, and more tacitly, the setting of Sweetwater itself. In fact, Cather's quip that, quote, our present is ruined, but we had a beautiful past, may very well be the main idea of the book summed up in a single sentence. It's one of those books whose theme of tradition versus change echoes other books like John Williams' Stoner and uh, Richard Yates's Evolutionary Road, if you've read either one of those and are looking for a similar uh, story about a, a similar theme that also happens to be really well done, at least in my opinion, this might be something for you. It's really no small wonder that this book actually inspired The Great Gatsby, another book, who, one of whose underlying themes is The Changing of Generations. Uh, a work with which it shares a large thematic overlap, at least as I read them. Fitzgerald once said that when his book was put next to The Lost Lady, The Great Gatsby failed in comparison. You might agree or disagree, but it's, it's uh, humbling that of himself that he would say such a thing. Maybe that'll serve as an impetus for someone, or me, to uh, go we'll pick up this book for someone else, but for me to pick up something else by her. It's about time. I really, really <laughs> enjoyed this much more than I was expecting to. This is A Lost Lady by Willa Cather, one of, one of her quote-unquote more minor works, but a highly, highly enjoyable and well-done one. I will see everyone next time. Bye.